Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And today we are going to wrap up the Rick Remender Venom run, the Agent Venom stuff that he's been doing. So we're going to talk about Savage 6 and uh, a one-shot called Father's Day. The, those are the like his last stories he did for this book. It's issues 17 through 22, and we're going to kind of fly through them. So, uh, so buckle in, because we're going to kind of go through this as quickly as I can. Because the last video I did was like the, the Spider-Man stuff ran a lot longer than I wanted to. I wanted that to be like 20, 25 minutes. So this one I want to try to go through a little faster. Um, also, the reason for that too is because I noticed that I didn't grab a lot of screenshots from this. There wasn't a lot of moments that really like blew my mind in this in this book. And that's not to slam the book per se, but that's just saying like normally when I go through and do screenshots of stuff, I'm like, oh wow, there's a lot of things happening in this. And this one, although story-wise there's a, quite a bit happening um, and a lot happens at once, it does feel a little condensed. Like this feels like one of those stories that could have maybe benefited from an extra issue or two, um, but we'll get into it. And you guys, maybe if you disagree with me, you let me know. But overall, I did like it. Uh, Rick Remender stuff has been really fun, although I, I definitely don't like how he writes Eddie Brock, and there is more of that in this run, on this storyline, and I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and also, the Savage Six didn't really feel like a, like a Sinister Six type thing. You know how normally the Sinister Six, when they come together, they're all coming at Spider-Man at like at one time. Sometimes they attack him in like waves, but usually it's like, you know, all of them at once and, you know, and everything like that there wasn't a ton of that this time around. There was a couple shots with the whole group of Savage Six, but it was like, they're really brief. And they're mostly dialogue scenes. They weren't even like scenes where they were actually taking action for the most part. Um, so the first issue, issue 17, is a prologue to Savage Six. This is kind of setting up that whole storyline. And it starts off and it's, you know, Flash Thompson. He's like in this rundown, you know, house, like our apartment that he's living in. Um, and he's, uh, you know, thinking about, um, or actually, well, we, we start off with Eddie Brock and he's kind of like, you know, uh, gearing up for his mission and stuff. But then you also have Flash and he's talking about, you know, being drunk and falling apart and, you know, and being on the Avengers and, you know, and, and trying to look for a way out to an extent. And he knows that the actions he's about to take are definitely going to kick him out of the Avengers team because now what he wants to do after everything that's been going on, he wants to just full on take the fight to these bad guys. He was played in, you know, the recent issue by the Human Fly and now Human Fly is with Crime Master and Jack-O-Lantern as part of like this Savage Six group that they're building up. And, and he's like, I got to take these guys out. And if I do, that means I'm not going to be an Avenger anymore. And, uh, you know, most likely because I've already almost crossed the line killing as an Avenger and they didn't like it. So if I do cross this line, they're not going to like it. So he calls up, you know, Hank Pym and stuff. And he's like, hey, I need the suit. There's some low level crime down here. And they're like, oh, do you need help? And he's like, no, I just need the suit. And I promise I'll give it back in 24 hours. So he gets the suit and he, uh, as Venom, goes out into the night to look for his enemies and he has a sniper rifle with him and he's just ready to full on kill them like he's not playing around anymore he doesn't want them coming after betty or his mom or his sister or anything like that so he's like i'm just going to kill these guys flat out um so uh so anyway so he goes out and does that or you know pr tries to do that and eddie brock is following him so eddie brock is after uh, flash thompson and meanwhile like i said you have like kind of your group of bad guys and it's like a bunch of d-list people um there's like a guy with an m on his chest i can't remember his name like medic or something like that i can't remember um I'm, pro I'm probably butchering that or i'm probably way off uh but uh but you have human fly on the team um you have like this like uh reptilian type person that's on the team you have crime master jack o lantern obviously and they're gonna get a sixth member and their sixth member kind of shows up when flash thompson shows up to has a sniper rifle great shot of him i love the artwork in this one and he's like aiming at crime master he's getting ready to take him out and then uh for some reason eddie brock is like no like i'm the hand of god and i'm gonna take you down venom and i'm gonna destroy you and you're like what like come on eddie like he's about to take down bad guys like you don't like these bad guys either so like it's just it's one of those things where again rick remender i think he just had I don't he had a clearly had an idea of who he thought Eddie Brock was and what he wanted to do with the character. I just completely disagree with it. I think every instinct he had when it comes to writing Eddie Brock was the wrong instinct. I think everything he does for the character from dialogue to motivation to everything, I think is terrible. It's it's so terrible. And so uh, so Eddie Brock does come at Venom, Venom, you know, makes short work of Eddie, webs him up, leaves him there, and then decides, okay, I'm going to go down, I'm going to kill these bad guys, and he gets a chance to, uh, to kill uh, Crime Master, but then the other Savage uh, Six members, you know, get in and interfere, and they, they beat up Flash a little bit, and he's a little too weak, and he's like, you know what, I can't do it, and, uh, you know, I got to get out of here before I lose control or something else happens, which I'm like, well, why? Like, if you lose control, you'll probably just eat them all, and isn't that kind of what you wanted to do? But then I think he's starting to have regrets of, like, actually killing them, so, so he's like, I 
better just get out of here and reform a plan. I got to bring the suit back to the Avengers, so I'm going to get out of here. So he leaves, and he leaves behind Eddie Brock, who is now uh, taken by Crime Master. And Crime Master said, you know, um, I've been putting this little organization together and stuff, and, and ever since Venom showed up on the scene and screwed up Jack's face, you know, over in the other country when they fought each other, he's like, I've wanted my own symbiote. And he goes, so I, I spent a lot of money and a lot of time to track down a symbiote, and I finally have one. So he has the toxin symbiote in a little uh, biohazard canister. And he's like, so this is toxin. He's like, toxin, meet Eddie Brock. And he releases toxin out and it goes in bonds with Eddie Brock. So I guess uh, Patrick Mulligan is dead, uh, you know, which I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. I never really liked that character too much. I kind of like what they try to do with him, but I just, I really didn't like that it was like a vanity character basically for Peter, uh, Peter Milligan, who was the writer and he created Pat Mulligan and he basically named him so, almost exactly after himself, which is you know, just the height of ego in my opinion. Um, so anyway, so at the end of the book, you know, Eddie Brock is now Toxin and he's like, I'm going to kill Venom. So he decides, all right, I'll team up with the crime master, which I'm like, I don't, would it, would he do that? Like, it, like that's the thing about Rick Remender is I think he just doesn't like writing the symbiote as a character. Like, so like Flash Thompson, ever since issue one of, of, uh, Remender's run, it, it has been pumped with chemicals or some kind of, you know, uh, antidote or something that would prevent it from, uh, and by the way, if you hear noise outside, I'm sorry. It's just like, this is the only time I have to record this and there's yard work going on outside and it's very frustrating because it's been happening for like two hours now and I thought they'd be done by now, but of course they're not. So, you know, so I apologize for the background noise if you hear it. Um, but uh, so we have Flash Thompson and he's, you know, you have Rick Remender kind of approaching Flash like, all right, the suit, I'm not going to give it a voice really. So we're going to come up with this, a reason why we don't give it a voice. So it's going to be, you know, docile. It's going to be hit with this chemical that a Flash has to take or put into the symbiote that makes it not speak to Flash so they don't really have that connection. Um, and then also here with Toxin, it's like I feel like Toxin would have an opinion about, you know, uh, Pat Mulligan being killed um, and then also being bonded with Eddie Brock, who is like its grandfather, like, or like at one point when he was Venom. Like, I feel like there would be more of that here and then but Remender doesn't do that. So that's another negative, in my opinion, is that Remender just doesn't seem to want to make these symbiote characters they're just mindless monsters that possess people and I kind of don't like his approach to that at all so again uh, his his instinct for the that kind of stuff I don't like um, and then meanwhile you have Betty Branch she's talking to Peter she's telling him about breaking up with Flash that it's for real this time and that's when Jack shows up and Jack with his busted up face is now like all right we're putting our final plan into motion we're going to kidnap uh, Flash's sister we're going to kidnap his mom we're going to kidnap Betty because he came in try to kill us so now we're just going to full-on accelerate our plans we have our Savage Six now and we're going to take him down so Jack goes and tries to get Betty but Flash shows up he takes the suit back from the Avengers comes down here and fights uh, but that's when like uh, the person with the giant M on his sh uh, chest shows up and they fight each other and they get into it and uh, and so uh, he can like transfer uh, through phones and things like that so he comes out of a cell phone and punches uh, Flash Thompson and the two of them get into it and then at some point as Flash gets away with Betty um, he gets attacked by Toxin so Toxin being the third member of the group showing up to fight him uh, they get into a big battle out in the middle of the street and that's when uh, Flash starts realizing oh wait, crap it's Eddie and then in like two pages three pages he makes short work of Eddie too. He sets off a uh, like a sonic bomb that goes off and it drops him to the ground. Uh, but then, you know, luckily, because I was like, please don't let that be the end of the fight. Luckily, uh, Toxin regroups and comes back and fights uh, Flash again. But again, another page or two later, Flash ends up taking down Toxin once again and uh, and defeating Eddie once again. So it's like, I don't know, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, well, what's the, like, I'm sure they're going to rematch later because I think something happens in the Colin Bun run with that. So I'm sure we'll get more of that later, but, and I think we see more Venom in this later, you know, throughout this story that we're going to talk about today, but, um, but still it's just like, he makes short work of them and the action scenes aren't that exciting in some of these, which is like, I like the scene where he was going to kill them. Like that whole scene was amazing, but this stuff where it's just like random fights, fist fights and stuff, even though the art's good, just not very exciting, like a uh, framing and, and stuff like that for the fights. And they, and they're so short, you know, it's kind of like, uh, whatever. Um, so anyway, so Flash at the end saves Betty and then reveals to Betty that, Agent Venom is actually Flash Thompson. And of course, in the next issue, in issue 18, she's not happy about it. She's like, you jerk, you've been a, a superhero this whole time. He's like, well, um, you know, she's like, you're Venom? Like, you're the new Venom? And, you know, she's like, you know, she knows what Venom is. She's worked at the Daily Bugle and stuff. So uh, he's like, yes, but, you know, we don't have time to argue right now. My sister's in danger. My mom's in danger. I got to take you. So they go webbing through the city. He's like, can you please call my mom? Make sure she's okay. So she's trying to dial. It doesn't happen. And that's when the, the, the villain who can transfer through the phones comes in and tries to t take a swipe at them. 
so you know Venom throws the cell phone away so they can get away from him and uh, and they end up getting to Flash's uh, sister's house and when they get there uh, they go in and this scene was really dark Flash goes in looking for his sister and uh, when he looks behind uh, the, the bedroom door, uh, her, his sister's husband, uh, who uh, is laying on the bed and the top of his head has been cut off and his head has been carved out. And there's a candle in there making his face a jack-o'-lantern, essentially, with no eyes and his mouth open. That was really dark and creepy. <laughs> I, I really like that. That's why I like this jack-o'-lantern version. I think that's probably one of the best things that uh, Remender has done on this run is making jack-o'-lantern a real formidable foe and a real twisted character. And I think it's probably some of the most interesting and vile things that has ever been done with this character. And I, I actually really like uh, that Jack is on that level because uh, he's almost like a Cletus Cassidy. He's like really twisted. Um, so anyway, so Flash is like, all right, Betty, we got to get out of here because, you know, now the apartment's rigged to blow. So they get out right as the explosion happens. So he's like, great. Now, so now because of what I've done, uh, you know, Betty's in danger. My sister's kidnapped. Her, my sister's husband has is, is been killed and my mom is out there somewhere and we got to find her. So uh, he's like, all right, Betty, I'm going to leave you here. You're safe here, like some unknown place. And he's like, I'm going to go after my sister. He goes and finds his sister, I think, at a church and Jack Lantern shows up and the two of them get into it big time. Uh, but then you see that Toxin has actually found Betty and has taken her back to the hideout uh, with the Savage Six. So pretty much this whole book is just like battle, 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 battle. Issue 20 here um, has the battle continuing where, where Flash is getting into it with that lizard person that's on the team, the reptile person, and uh, Flash screws them up, like beats the living crap out of them, and then uh, eventually just snaps their neck. He's just like, you know, in front of, um, uh, you know, a couple people who are like, you know, they're like standing by and they're like, uh, you know, like, oh my God, you know, he's, it's Venom, you know, or whatever. And he grabs this lizard person and then he's just like, you know what, they're going to keep coming. They're going to come after Betty. Like, I can't show mercy on them. So he straight up snaps this one's neck and kills it. Uh, so, and then he, later on, he, uh, when he finds his mom, Flash finds his mom and the human fly has captured his mom. And he's like, I remember you human fly, you played me, you told me you had a son and all this stuff and you got away and that's why you're here now. And if, if I didn't let you get away, my mom wouldn't have been in trouble because you captured her for the Savage Six for Crime Master. And he's like, so now I have my mom back, I saved her. He goes, but I'm gonna torture you. So he rips off human fly's wings and tortures human fly full on. Um, and it's, it's pretty intense. Like Flash is like, yeah, I'm not gonna go easy on you. And he's like, and he turns to the, his mom, he's like, ma'am, turn away now, you don't wanna see this or hear this. And then he's like ripping the, the you know human fly, rips all of his wings off. And then he says, now talk, tell me what I wanna know about your boss. And, uh, and then we cut to the remaining members of the Savage Six, which is only four of them left, because uh, we have human flies down and the reptile person's down. So you have the, the person with the M on their chest that can transfer through phones. You have Toxin, Jack Lantern, and Crime Master. And they reveal, Crime Master takes off his mask and reveals that he has a secret identity, actually. It's not something I really thought about. I just was like, hey, he's just a random guy. There's been a, a couple different Crime Masters, so I didn't think his that his identity was important. So he reveals himself, and it turns out that uh, he is Bennett Brandt, which is Betty Brandt's brother, uh, which I thought was a little just too convenient. I mean, they've done stuff with Bennett before in the past about him possibly being a villain and stuff like that, and they, they've kind of gone down that road. And, and so I kind of, all right, I get it. Remender brought that back. But it's just like, it's so coincidental that, because uh, none of this was planned. Remember, when uh, when Jack Lantern was over in that other country doing his thing, they didn't know there was an Agent Venom. They, it wasn't like they baited Agent Venom out. So Flash Thompson, coincidentally being the person who pisses off Jack and that pisses off Crime Master and that turns them into keeping an eye on, uh, you know, and learning who Flash was. It's just like such a big cosmic coincidence that it happens to be the guy dating Crime Master's sister, you know, he, it's it's Betty Brant's boyfriend, Flash Thompson, is the one who's the enemy of Crime Master, who is her brother. It's like a little too convenient on that level, but it's still, it's fine. Like, like I said, they kind of did stuff with Bennett before and mentioned him before, so it, it kind of works. But in the final part here, Best Laid Plans in issue 21, um, you get a little bit of flashback into the Crime Master. He tells you a little bit about his life, like when he thought he was dead and how he woke up in this room and how he was given the mantle of Crime Master. That the Crime Master is almost like the Red Hood gang from Batman. It's like, it's a mantle that gets passed on to a couple different patsies or different for people and so he's the latest person to inherit the title crime master and then he kind of uh 
in his regrowing and trying to figure out who he is a, as Crime Master, that's when he comes across uh, Jack Lantern as a teenager and kind of becomes his surrogate father and raises him. Um, so, so that's kind of how all that happens. So you get kind of his background, his uh, his story, and meanwhile, you have Venom finally taking down the person with the M on their chest and uh, and also taking down uh, Toxin and beating him once and for all. But uh, but Toxin does get away. They fight in a fire. This battle is actually really epic. This makes up for the kind of the little slap fights they had in the first issue. Um, this makes up for that, or the second issue, whatever it was. This makes up for that, because this battle between Flash and Eddie is awesome. It's really, really intense and, and awesome. And there's a point where uh, Toxin is put on fire, and you know, and Flash tries to save Eddie, and he pulls Eddie away from the symbiote. He's like, I got you, don't worry, I got you. But then as the Toxin suit's on fire, it's like, no, I can't be separated. And it grabs Eddie and pulls him into the fire, and it looks like Eddie gets burnt up pretty bad. Um, so uh, so that that is happening. And meanwhile, after he takes down Eddie, and we, we don't really know what happens to Eddie, and like I said, I'm sure that'll be touched on in the Cullen Bun run later on. So we that was kind of last we've seen of Eddie and Toxin. But the M person guy, he gets taken down, so he's down, and now it's just Jack Lane and Crime Master, and you know now that Ed, uh, Flash is mom safe, his sister safe, Betty safe, uh, kind of, although she's still here, but at least she's not in direct harm's way at the moment. Um, you know that's when Flash takes the fight to Crime Master and to. Um, and to Jack Lantern. And uh, Crime Master has like a flame sonic gun that he tries to use on Flash, and he does, and it kind of separates him momentarily. But then, boom, uh, you know, Crime Master gets shot from behind, and when he turns around, he sees that it's Betty, and Betty has shot her own brother in order to save uh, her, you know, her, the man she loves, which is Flash. And it's even like the Red Hood gang, like uh, Crime Master falls into a, a vat of acid or whatever it is that he falls into. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. That's straight out of that. Um, but then Jack Lantern sees that his father died or, you know, whatever happened to him. Um, the Crime Master gets shot. And then he decides, okay, screw it. I'm, I'm out of here for now and I'll regroup and come back later. So, uh, so then the book ends uh, with Flash and Betty talking and basically Fl Flash telling her like what he's been up to. He wasn't with the VA. He's been Agent Venom this whole time and it's a government thing and that he's part of the Avengers. He goes, but uh, but it is, he's talking about the toll it's taken on him and their relationship and he, he apologizes and he's like, look, I did love you and I'm, I'm sorry I've fallen off the wagon. I did get drunk. I did all these terrible things. And he goes, I have a lot of pressure and a lot of things and I've been hiding this big secret from the one person I love more than anything in the world and it's been hard for me so I kind of like that there's a little bit there it's a little bit of a resolution but still not sure if they're going to be together and it looks like Flash might be heading off and you know to a different direction at, at this point but before he does he wants to track down the guy that got away he took down the Savage Six we don't know what happened to Toxin slash Eddie Brock but he he doesn't really care right now he just assumes they're dead because they got lit on fire but one member that did live and get away was Jack Lantern so he wants to find Jack Lantern but before he does he goes back to the Avengers and says hey look these are the things I've been up to this is the stuff I've been doing and if you don't want me to be a member anymore I understand completely because uh uh, because obviously like I'm I'm crossing the line and I did kill a couple bad guys and I did it to save people people that are close to me so I understand if you don't want me to be venom anymore be on the team anymore he goes but I, I the suit's kind of mine and you know I think there was like a little bit of discrepancy of like them going like well you should keep the suit with us then and we'll give we'll do this whole process with another host and he's kind of like no like he's like but i'm not going to be an avenger anymore either so uh so i think that's going to lead him to becoming a member of the thunderbolts and we'll talk about that coming up and then um and then i think he's uh, then he'll go off and join the guardians of the galaxy at one point we'll talk about all that hopefully before this season ends uh but the last issue is father's day and that's basically flash thompson i think the arts by declan shalvey because it's really awesome artwork it looks great um and you get basically flash this is his last mission in i think in new york because i think after this slowly after this he'll be moving on to another city i think colin bunn stuff takes place in like philadelphia or something so you have flash here and he's in new york and he's like all right last thing uh, I'm going to go take down jack o -Lantern. And before he comes back at Betty, like, I want to make sure she stays safe. Um, so I'm going to go take him down. So this whole issue is flashbacks to, to Flash's life. You see his early life, his time with his dad, times he stood up to his dad, times he didn't, um, times he felt his mom, he wished he, his mom could have done more to protect him, um, and times that she didn't, and then, uh, you know, and did, uh, you know, in some ways. And then also, like, the life he had with his sister and, you know, and how, like, the his dad went in to, like, beat on his sister one time and Flash came in to, you know, stop it from happening. So there's a lot of cool stuff, I guess. You kind of, as Flash is swinging around the city in this beautiful uh, big spread that happens at the beginning of the book, 
you do have these flashbacks of his life and things like that. And like, and it, that's the whole book is just flashing back to Flash, uh, his early life, uh, Eugene Flash Thompson's life. And you get to see what he was like growing up and things from his perspective and his daddy issues, basically. Um, and then he finds like the corpse of his dad um, that is also carved out with the light and inside, candle inside by Jacqueline. So Jacqueline actually digs up his uh, Flash's dad, straps a bomb to it, just like he did to uh, her, you know, his sister's husband and our Flash's sister's husband, and he sets him up, lures Flash there, and then explodes it. But Flash gets away, and then the two of them pretty much spend the last half of the book just trying to kill each other. And it is so awesome. This fight is really awesome. Like, Remender really did uh, not pull any punches with this one, because he has moments where Flash straight up shoots uh, Jack Lantern, uh, and it doesn't kill him. He's bashing his head in, um, and then he's like, as he's punching him, he's cutting back to uh, flashbacks of when his dad was hitting him and, and you know and things like that and there's all these parallels about something we talked about on one of my seek and destroy episodes with batman night cries where it's like people who grew up with child abuse like myself and you know, other people out there who have been in that situation growing up about getting out of getting off the hamster wheel breaking the chain stop repeating it stop repeating the cycle of, of everything don't move in a circle but try to move in a straight line get out of the pain and don't pass that pain on to somebody else and how hard that is to do how hard that is to overcome and so flash is ready he's like you know my dad i may be venom now where the teeth come out and, you know and he start transforming into venom and his teeth are coming out and he's losing control um he's like i may be this monster because but my dad was the first person who gave me teeth and my whole life i've been biting into people with these teeth and hurting people that I want to love and I want them to love me and he goes but I've been falling apart and I've been on this constant wheel my whole life just repeating my dad's sins to me repeating them to other people treating people badly you know not being there for support not being there when people need me and he goes and I'm tired of it and he goes so as he's getting ready to kill Jack Lantern he's already killed most of the other members of the team and then Betty shot you know her brother so pretty much Savage Six is gone, except for Toxins out there somewhere. But uh, he's like, this is the last guy, the last person who would torment Betty, um, other than Toxin, but he thinks Toxin's dead, so he doesn't know. But he's like, this is the last person that would torment Betty, and I got to kill him. He goes, but you know what? I'm not going to. And he even tells uh, Jack Lantern, he's like, you know, Jack Lantern, you and I both had screwed up childhoods. And he goes, maybe you more so than me. And he goes, but uh, but still, we, we I understand you. And he goes, and I understand what it's like to want to regurgitate the pain that we feel. And he goes, but we can't do it. We got to stop. And he goes, and this is where we stop. He's like, so I'm, you know, I, I beat you within an inch of your life, but he's like, but I'm going to let you have your life. He's like, but you're going to get locked up in maximum security prison. So he does, you know, he gets taken away. Um, the Avengers kind of find a nice holding cell for him. And then he goes and essentially resigns from the Avengers and says, look, I can't really do this anymore. Uh, too many people have been hurt and it cuts to his sister and she's mourning over the loss of her husband. Um, it cuts to his mom and she's kind of just staring out a window, uh, you know, remembering her life and the sins, her own sins and not being there for her kids and, and being there for Flash. But even though he still showed up to save her and he still has tried to be there for her whenever he can. And then also Betty, she's looking at pictures of her and Flash together and she ends up throwing the photo away. And then the book ends with Flash sitting in his apartment all alone, looking at this pictures of this life that he had, knowing that he's not going to be able to have it anymore. And he's like, you know, I, I don't know where I'm going to go from here, basically. So I think this was Remender basically saying like, hey, this is my final say on the character and whoever tackles the character next moving forward. Hopefully I left you in a place where you can kind of build off of that. And we'll see. I, I have not read any of the Cullen Bunn stuff as of recording this episode. I have not read a single issue of any of it except for Minimum Carnage. That's a storyline that we're going to talk about coming up um, that is a crossover with Scarlet Spider. And the only reason I read that was because at that time I was reading the Scarlet Spider comic book. And when I saw it crossed over with Venom for two issues, I was like, all right, I'll pick up those two issues of Venom as well. So that's the my only exposure to the Cullen Bunn stuff is through this you know crossover with Carnage. Uh, so we'll get there. It'll be coming up in like the next like you know couple episodes or something like that. Uh, but for now, this is Remender you know kind of signing off. Overall, I kind of like what he did with Flash. All the emotional stuff with him and Betty and his life and his his life with his dad. All that stuff I thought Remender knocked out of the park. As someone who can relate to some of that, um, I really really enjoyed reading it and seeing Flash come out on top of the end like whether you think it or not even though he's alone without his leg sitting in an apartment this is kind of a happy ending in some ways because he has gotten off the hamster wheel he's like i'm not gonna repeat the sins of my father you know even though i have kind of been doing that and that's been my struggle through this whole run this is me deciding no i'm gonna be a hero so i hope that that's the impetus for where colin bunn takes it i hope there's more banter back and forth between the suit and uh flash 
because as far as I know, Flash, he ends this book and you see him in the dark. We don't know if the suit's there with him. I don't know where the suit is, if the Avengers have it, what's going on. I don't know. So we'll find out when we get into the Cullen Bunn stuff. Um, but I know some of you probably know. So, you know, if you spoil it for me, fine, whatever. But try not to if you can. Um, I, I'm looking forward to reading that book. And I have the full trade of the Cullen Bunn run. So I'll definitely dive into that in upcoming episodes for sure. We'll break it up into like three or four episodes. But we'll probably just do that whole trade at once. And I'll just edit it down to like three, you know, two, or you know, maybe two, three or four episodes. We'll see. We'll see how much I got to do. Um, but the minimum carnage story I want to do separate. So that'll be a separate episode because, uh, you know, obviously it's carnage related. So I want to talk about it kind of separately. So, uh, yeah. So let me know what you think of this run. What did you think overall of Remender's run? Um, all that stuff with the characters of, of Flash and Betty and everything uh, and Jack-O-Lantern. Like, I loved all that. I think that was the crux of the book. That was the heart of the book. That's what really made me invested in this book and what I love the most about it. But the Eddie Brock stuff, some of the side things, I really didn't like. But I liked Human Fly, I liked Jack Lantern, I liked Crime Master, except for the kind of the reveal was kind of eh to me. But whatever, it, it gave Betty a connection to the story uh, that was bigger than than her just being the damsel in distress. It made her play in a bigger, important part. And at the end of the day, she saved. She had to choose between her brother or the man she recently broke up with, but still kind of loves. And I thought that was a, a big moment for the character. And so to give a character like Betty that kind of a moment, I got, you know, that's awesome. So that, that's all good stuff to me. Uh, but just some of the Eddie Brock and Toxin and stuff and some of the, the, the way the symbiote's not handled in a way where it can communicate with Flash, it's like, that's to me, that's the whole thing of Venom. It's that it's two characters in one. It's like a buddy cop, but they're together. So it would have just been neater to see Flash on these missions communicating with the symbiote and him wanting to do one thing and the symbiote wanting to do something else or you know or the symbiote learning from him how to be tactical how to be stealthy because obviously when it was on Eddie it was just a big loud monster running around it just would have been cool to see that kind of growth so hopefully Colin Bunn does that I don't know we'll see but uh, but here I didn't get it so that's what that's some of the few minors that are uh, the negatives that I didn't like about this run. But overall, really enjoyed it. And I'm glad I, I finally finished it to its completion. And we'll get into the Cullen Bun stuff very soon. So again, let me know what you think of the Rick Remender run. This run sp uh, specifically, Savage 6. Let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll have more episodes for you very soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.